G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. As the update 2.5 Iqua Strike dropped, we received change that we weren't really anticipating, but was really, really cool nonetheless. And that was the F-104J receiving four AIM-9Ps. The AIM-9P is the same missile that is put on the F-5A in the Chinese tree, and of course the same missile that we get on the F-1. These particular missiles are basically analogous to the RB-24J and the AIM-9P, AIM-9P, AIM-9J. So they are pretty stock standard in terms of top tier. However, this particular plane being a 10.3, getting these missiles breathes a new sort of lease on life or gives, a, gives the F-104J a sort of new lease on life. And to me, that means more than anything for War Thunder and its jets. So, the F-104J is basically just a Japanese, I think F-104CA, something like that. It feels very much like an F-104G from the Chinese tree, but a little bit lighter and a little bit sort of less grunty. It's definitely not quite as fast as an F-104S, uh, and it certainly doesn't give it the same sort of level of level of oomph, if you will. Um, I'm not actually quite sure what it is, someone let me know in the comment section below because you guys will know a lot better than me. All I know is that it is a uh, supersonic lawn dart with four other supersonic lawn darts that uh, are attached to the fuselage and a little bit of brute and a little bit of fire coming out the back. That's really all I care about and that's really all that matters in the sense of War Thunder. Well, I, I lie there a little bit. It has RWR which is really really nice and it also has a fairly decent radar. Um, recently it also got CCIP or the uh, bombing computer, so you get a couple of little bonuses there along with it. The, F uh, the F-104's got a lot of love and it's quite nice to see that they did so. However, I do think their position in their respective tech trees is a little bit compromised by a little friend we know called Battle Rating Compression. Now, I want to talk about this first and get it straight out of the way because the game that I'm going to show you next is going to be the sort of the, the really nice game that I want to break down and talk about how to play this thing. But overall, I want to talk about this thing in its sort of meta and where it sits. Now, the F-104J is one of those planes that has to really do the zoomies. And if it can't do zoomies, well, it's not going to really have a fun time. You basically need to use your speed, and if you don't have speed, well, you can kiss your ass goodbye because that's really all you've got. You don't have wing loading, you don't have anything really. You haven't got climb rate, you haven't got turn rate, you haven't got energy retention. Maybe energy retention in a turn, and that's solely due to the fact that you are a lawn dart and you can't turn. But for the most part, having a fast boy with good missiles is, is fairly decent, and I did mention uh, in my FGR2 video that this is kind of the case with the FGR2 and why it's a little bit more of a struggle bus than you might think or you might have hoped for. And that's basically because uh, you can't polish a turd and when I say a turd I mean an airframe being a little bit on the heavy side, eating too many hamburgers or in this case eating too much sushi or too much uh, rice or, or, or too much ramen or something like that. But uh, regardless, I think the F-104J getting these missiles is really nice. Uh, I just wish it didn't constantly face things like uh, MiG-21 Bisses. I, I think if it had a little bit more distance between these types of planes, where it could use a little bit more of its advantages, then I would be a little bit less against this plane. Or not so much against it, but I would be uh, a little bit more warming to this plane. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be so cold. And that's the thing with this plane. It needs to be played extremely carefully because you, you just can't make any mistakes or you can't be caught with your pants down. And here, this is sort of what you're limited to. Kind of like the uh, video that I put up last time or the, the previous video in the F-8 Crusader, you are limited to a support role. And whilst that's not an entirely bad thing, you, you still do need your occasional support planes. I think that the support planes should be a little bit more distanced from those planes that are the meta. So things like the 21 BIS, the MiG-21 SMT and MF, the F-4E and the F-4EJ. I think these particular planes that uh, sort of rule the roost a little bit more should be the ones that are higher in battle rating by a little bit more than what currently is. Like I said, like I've constantly been saying over the past basically three months, I think 11.0 is necessary at this point, 
and I think that uh, there are a couple more issues that battle rating compression can potentially fix. Um, things that can be balanced other ways and things that can be sort of just tweaked so that the battle rating is nice and so that we have even battle ratings sort of across the uh, across the spread so that you're not left with holes of like no 9.3s for example. As you can probably imagine having a situation like this is not pleasant but when it happens all the time it becomes a little bit uh, less bearable and so I think having viewer situations like this so for example having this particular plane go up against the uh, SQ-17 and the A7D and maybe the MiG-19 and the earlier F-104s things like that I think that would make it a little bit nicer overall uh, and of course I I think we have enough vehicles for this at this point especially in the 10 era uh, I think we we just have plenty of space and plenty of breathing room for these types of planes now Onto the gameplay, I'd like to just talk about this little moment here. Now, notice that the Mirage has sort of dropped back a little bit, and that's because of a little thing that is called energy retention in a turn. And this is the one thing that you can use in your F-104 against your opponents in a little bit of a pinch. You don't want to be using this. Um, I also suspect that the guy's low on fuel because uh, I'm, I'm pulling away quite rapidly. But the fact is that if you are caught with your pants down in the F-104J, you are pretty much screwed. So if you can, maybe try this little bit of a tactic, but I genuinely think that this is an absolute last resort. You shouldn't be like actively turn fighting Mirages, for example. Uh, I'm only doing it in this case to hopefully get a nice bait on this Mirage, but uh, it turns out that the this particular one is going to be going for the F-104 eventually. Now. I need to stress that the way that you ideally play an F-104 is the same way that you ideally play an FGR-2. You sit on the outskirts of the battle, you go zoomies, and you pick off targets that are slow. Now the AIM-9Ps are pretty good, and they can pick up targets that are less slow, I guess, but I still wouldn't be risking your precious missiles on uh, spicy targets. Ambitious missiles aren't always ideal, and it tends to be the case that more often than not, if you're going to be firing a little bit of an ambitious missile and it's going to miss, well, you probably should have just, you know, spent it on something else that's a little bit uh, more valuable in that case. So, the F-104J, as you can see, I've managed to get three kills in a full up tier. It's not too bad, but again, provided that your team isn't full of monkeys, then you are going to do basically just fine. If you gave a Spitfire AIM-9Ps, and threw it at 10.7 and the teams weren't awful, well, honestly, you would have a fairly decent time because as long as you have the lethality, then you are pretty much good to go. But in the case of, I guess, a uh, full up tier where your team is embracing monkey, well, you're kind of screwed and there's nothing you can do. But what if you're in a full down tier? Now, this is a little bit on the spicy side if I do say so myself. This particular plane in a full down tier is a little bit too much, I think. Having the F-104G and the Chinese tree at the same battle rating previously, um, I found that a little bit too much on the spicy side as well. And on top of that, the F-104S being at 10.3, it is very, very spicy coming up against those 9.3s. And uh, realizing that all they have to do is, uh, well, they can't do anything. There's nothing that you can feasibly do in a CL-13B. Oh yeah, I keep forgetting that it's 9.7 because Gaijin uh, thinks that it's appropriate for it to be at 9.7. But things like the Shenyang F5, uh, things like, uh, I guess, what else is there at 9.3? I guess Gaijin have killed that off so much that uh, my argument is becoming less and less valid as time goes by. But the point being is that these particular battle ratings are not kind in a full up tier. Things like 10.7 uh, in a full up tier, I think, is a little bit more... Uh, uh, you know, a little bit more on the kind side here. So let's sort of diverge a little bit and have a look at the battle. So what I'm doing, I've come from the outside of the battle or from the uh, from the sort of edges of the battle and I'm making my way in to try and get myself some nice little kills. I see a, a Harrier there and he wants to go head on, but um, he pulls off at the last second doing some funny stuff. So you know what, I'm going to take it and uh, try and go for this Mirage instead. Now the Mirage, I'm just going to go for guns, spray a little bit, get myself a nice little kill on an unsuspecting Mirage 3E. He's probably stock as well. So now that my enemies are basically distracted as all hell, I have close to free reign on them. 
And this is the key with the F-104J, you need to have those sort of distracted enemies. I have a Harrier GR1 here who's now on fire, but uh, this MiG-21 looks like a very, very nice juicy target, and it's a MiG-21 BIS, and I get a nice easy kill. I'm going to look at the Jaguar here, and he, just as he's turning around, you can see he's just too slow to get guns on target, and a little bit of brute sorts that out very, very quickly. Now that I've basically got that out of the way, who's left? Not many. In fact, it's going to be a pretty easy fight if we can just sort of tie over these last few enemies, and it's basically going to be game over, but uh, tell you what, this is where the spicy stuff starts. Um, I guess you can make a drinking game out of the amount of times that I've said spicy, but speaking of uh, a bit of monkey, we have Missile Thunder sort of uh, deciding it doesn't want to work anymore. And of course, the Harrier GR1 decides he wants to join the fray and takes out an AV-8C. The uh, Harrier here is probably going to be a bit, of a, uh, a bit of a significant threat. He picks up another kill there, as you can see on that other AV-8C, uh, and it's starting to look like a bit of a dire situation. If he gets himself a couple more kills, he's potentially going to be able to carry the game, uh, and I don't want that, so aim 9p his way. There's not a whole lot he can do, especially if he's been slow like that, and I uh, managed to get a nice kill. Very, very easy and straightforward. So, just as that it finishes up, an F-104 decides he wants to come in at 5 kilometers and get spotted, and so I'm going to go for a sort of janky head-on. You don't really do these things unless you're like super suicidal, and even then I don't really recommend it. So, this F-104 here, I believe he's an F-104A, and uh, he comes in with an absolute vengeance for uh, my teammates. It looks like this is going to be a little bit of a tough fight. It's seems like he's going for the F4E there and he's probably going to get some burnt in and that's not ideal so we're going to send an AIM-9P and the AIM-9P decides to do weird things uh, and decides to not really track properly. I don't know what it is but it seems like they have been doing it a little bit more frequently lately and I don't know why. So all of that aside we have F104 who is now chasing the F4E and the F4E decides that he wants to get shot down by the F104 even though the F4E is probably our best chance at destroying him at once and for all so it basically comes down to me and uh, yeah you can guess where this goes I miss uh, again a little bit of uh, panic shooting I suppose uh, the F104A here is in a little bit of a dire situation but I would really uh, it would be an absolute miracle if you survived for much longer, and uh, it turns out miracles really do happen. So, as he goes basically back off to base, and an F1 chases him down, uh, I'm starting to consider my options too, because I don't have too much ammunition left, I can't really leave these guns for my life, and of course I'm running out of fuel. The all-important elixir to a good RRB match. The uh, all-important fuel. And that's one thing that I've found a lot lately. I've been sort of struggling with fuel because I just take a little bit less. And it turns out that uh, it's not always the best decision. So, moving on a little bit more, we have a bit more of a dire situation. With some editing magic, I have uh, gone down to land rearm and repair. And there's basically two or three of us left. And one of them is on the runway, sort of not doing much. So... I, I basically am in a 2 versus 2 here with that F4C, but uh, the F4C is deciding to strafe ground targets instead of going for air targets, which is a little bit frustrating, but uh, at least maybe I can get myself a uh, couple of kills here. I go for a quick head-on with the SU-17, he dodges that of course, and now that leaves me with an F104A to deal with because now he's giving me chase. So what am I going to do? I'm going to put the plane up a little bit and try and bring him across to the F4C. So hopefully the F4C can uh, maybe scrape out a kill here, grab something nice and uh, give us a bit more of a numbers advantage. The SU-17 is heading straight for the airfield to strafe the F1 on the runway, which is obviously lovely and fun and engaging and excellent, full of excellent gameplay decisions right there by Gaijin. Uh, and unfortunately for me, none of the two things that I want to happen transpire. I want the uh, SU-17 to get shot down by AA because he's being an absolute piece of, uh, I don't know, potato. And the F-4C is continuing to strafe ground targets. So the F-104 is like, huh, cool, free kill, and decides to go for the uh, absolutely free kill. You might be wondering why I'm taking the time to roast the F-4C, but if you think about it here, being the F-4C, you really could have changed the tide of the battle by just not going for ground targets. I think it's as simple as that, and the fact that uh, this F-4C decided to ignore 
everything around him and just concentrate on some stationary targets on the ground that do fuck all for the game uh, is a little bit uh, incredible to be honest. For me, if one thing is for certain, you chase the win, and then if you can't chase the win, then I guess you just chase ground targets and leave the match. But you, you don't sort of abandon your teammates like that if you can. And in this case, there were plenty of opportunities for some nice kills. Speaking of nice kills, it basically now leaves me in a two versus one situation. Now, I'm going to get desperate here and do some uh, very desperado things. I see the SU-17, I just commit to a head-on. Don't do that in a normal circumstance, please. But uh, in this particular case, it sort of worked out for me. Now, the F-104A decides he wanted to go for a little bit of a loop and put himself in an awkward situation. Now, all I have to do is sit on my air brake and uh, either gain some distance from the F-104A or alternatively just sort of sit behind him and gun him down without the AIM-9Ps. I still have plenty of missiles left. We're at slow speeds. We are basically guaranteed to get ourselves a kill and that is kind of what I'm aiming for here. Look at that missile tracking very, very nice, even at those low speeds. Going for the 6K and in a full down tier, this thing is nasty. This thing is, is, is heinous. It's really, really strong. And for me, for that reason, I would probably put it at 10.7. It's not a meta 10.7, it's certainly a support 10.7. But that being said, in a full down tier, I don't really think it's fair on things like uh, an F-40 Sabre, for example. I think in this case, I would prefer for this one vehicle to suffer a little bit more than for a whole battle rating to sort of face the wrath of a six kill possible game without really breaking it so much as a sweat. Anyway, ladies and gents, thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate everything. Honestly, it's been a fairly interesting couple months. And of course, everything is now starting to go back to normal. I really appreciate it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for watching. Take care, and I'll catch you next time.